What is up guys, mco 40 here. We had a few pieces of news come out overnight. Um, one of the big ones was the newest Elemental Hero monster. Now, it is Elemental Hero Solid Man. Now, the saddest part about this card is right here in its attribute. This is a phenomenal card for what it does for the archetype, but there are a few things I want to point out here. First off, it's level 4 Warrior, so of course you can write a for it. It has Elemental Hero in its name, which is extremely good. Um, first thing is, when this card is Normal Summon, you can special summon one level 4 or lower hero monster from your hand. Notice the very strict restriction of when this card is Normal Summon. They didn't want to create a paradox with the Neb and Altair, where you can kind of just call the Haunted, revive, continue on with your day. Um, it's really disappointing that they didn't allow this deck to have that ability, because I guess having cards and heroes that have other abilities when they're special summoned, not too good. <laughs> ITT, if you continuously look at how retarded we've gotten with Stratos over here, you know, one of the biggest flaw designs in Stratos was the fact that it can OTK as a one card, and to top things off, it's unfortunately one of those cards that works on special summon. And Konami has said a thousand times over that, you know, the issue with Stratos is because it works on special summon. So we can't have that. We had to restrict it to just commit a normal summon. And then if this card is sent from your monster zone to the graveyard by a spell card, you could target one hero monster in your graveyard, except for Solid Man, and special summon it in defense mode. So, um, if this card is sent to your graveyard by a spell effect. So if I dark hole it, you can revive something, which is really weird. Regeki also, but this is essentially your synergy with Mask Change. And this is what I was getting into earlier with the symbol up here. You know how many good masked heroes there are for Earth? Literally only one good masked hero for Earth. It, it's fucking Dion. When, it must be special summon, mass change can't be special summon, by the ways. This card destroys a monster by balance in the graveyard. You can special summon one level four lower hero monster from your deck. So, if I mass change into this and I already have a target present in the graveyard, um, we can revive something. And then we can attack over something with uh, Dion here and uh, special summon from the deck? Does, does that seem worth the investment? Because this is already taking up my extra deck monster zone. You know, like, we've already got one thing locked in the EDM. So, like, what advantage am I getting out from heroes? Shadow Mist? Um, searching for another mass change? Um, yeah, like, is it kind of worth it? I don't personally think so. But, you know, every other masked hero, pretty much besides Goka, has another one of these. And we're definitely going to need a lot more masked heroes if you're going to continue on this current trend of releasing support like this. Because it's coming a lot more apparent that they're wanting the hero engine itself to work with uh, the mass change archetype. You know, like we've kind of definitely strayed away from the, the fusion aspect, and everything lately has just been mass change, mass change, mass change. Even the fucking the new Link monster we're getting over yonder in the corner works with resolving mass change targets, but like, it just need to stop and focus on what OG heroes did. You know, the hero stun deck, the capitalization, the resource pool that it generated for you. It's, why are we forgetting about the consistency that it gave to us? It's really annoying. Also, as I said before, why does this not fucking work on special summon? You know, like, cool, another dead draw hero. Also, the other biggest flaw with this card is Effect Veiler is now running around in the OCG. The OCG is adapted back to that mentality. So, if you're stranded on a normal summon island and you get Shvalered, well, you're stuck on this thing with no real additional resources. This thing doesn't even have the fucking ability to fucking search for mask spell cards. You know, like, you need to, you need to give this deck more if you're pushing it as hard as you are. But, that's my two cents on that thing. Next up... The Holy Trinity. So, earlier today, everyone in the TCG shit their pants because we did not get to vote on the next Shonen Jump card. So, today will go down in history as a very splendid day that we don't have to deal with Security Dragon, we don't have to deal with Summon Sorceress. There were 
there were a lot of fireworks today. Um, but instead, we were, we weren't given that choice. But we're getting Trickstar, what the fuck, Crimson Heart is her name? And of course, you've got to be locked in for this by January 15th. So, you've got, give or take, six days to get your shit together if you want to pick up your copy of this. Because literally once this window passes, I don't think we're getting another promo until, what, May? Um, also, the age-old question about Link Karibo being legal. Um, all cards are supposed to be shipped, but I think it said January 26th. Uh, it doesn't give us an official clarification yet as to when the card will be legal, but we're starting to kind of think it's going to be around that window. Really interesting to note that they've delayed that legalization for so long. So, Crimson Heart. This thing is what? Right? Hold on. Down left and up right? Fucking, those are some weird-ass zones. Um... And it's just two two monsters to make this thing? Two Trickstar monsters. Okay, so it's not even generic. Each time a Trickstar monster is normal special summon to a zone this card points to. So, down or to her right. Alright. Um, you get to gain 200 life points. Okay. You can just call one Trickster card. Both players draw one card. But if your life points are at least 2,000 higher than your opponent's, when this effect is activated, you get to draw two cards instead. And then you can only use this effect once per turn for her. So, the first complaint that I'm going to hear from every Trickstar player ever is why do I want to lose my two licorices on the field to go into this? And you're not wrong. I don't disagree with that mentality, but having another resource that you can go into is not a bad thing. The Trickster deck, it's been functioning as a burn deck for the longest time, but having one more resource to you, even if you're not playing, what is it, Eater of Millions, you know, you can just eat it off of your extra deck and just not really give a fuck. You know, it's not an issue to you whatsoever. But, case in point, having a ability to draw two in the form of a Link monster, I mean, it's all a 2,000 Link 2. It might be a game finisher, you might need 200 extra life points for time. You never know. It's one more resource available to you that you can access at any stage in the game for literally free. So I wouldn't rag on it too much. I don't think these are going to be more than like 15 bucks, honestly. It's still a Shonen Jump card. This is probably going to get the reprint near the end of the year when we get, what is it, the fucking legendary collection with everything. I'm definitely expecting alternate art firewall in there. And other things. So, I definitely am expecting this to have the repent before the end of the year, considering what it is. But, act now, January 15th, you'll have the chance to pick up your copy of Trickstar Crimson Heart, um, ensuring that you're basically locked in for it. I don't know why we didn't get Security Dragon. I mean, I guess it's a trade off. We gotta go from one bad card to another, like, okay one. Not every Shonen Jump card has to be a winner, so can't really be too disappointed in that logic. Um, can't win them all, I guess. So, there's that. Um, last little thing I want to cover on this video. What is up with the OCG? Fucking thinking that every person wants a mat with Cybers and Playmaker on it. I'm not quite sure what this mentality has been, but they are really overdoing this Playmaker thing. Like... We've already had one mat with Decode, we've had a mat with Xcode on it, and now these two join the fray with our boy Yusaku on it. I I don't know why they are pushing this so goddamn hard, but they are they are in love with this guy. This this would be something I would see for a win mat in the TCG, which would be nice. I'm not gonna lie, but it's a different story. And then the top four play mat. I have a very strange feeling we might be seeing something like this as like our Nationals Top Cup playmat this year. We haven't done anything with Firewall as a uh, particular card yet, or the Cybers archetype, so I wouldn't be surprised if the North American WCQ playmat doesn't look similar to this. It all kind of depends on when we get Firewall later on in the year, but the simplicity and what we know for copy and paste abilities is probably going to be coming later in the year. Uh, please help us. I really don't want this to be a Nationals map, but even anything to do with like this 
I, I would just it'd be much happier not to have. So what do you guys think about all the new stuff today? Please leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'm out guys, later. The ride never ends guys, make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Card Fight Vanguard channel, and join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.